origin story. What got you into this kind of thing for schooling? When you're young, you said, I want to get into labor economics. Well, you know, I took advice from mentors throughout my life. I was blessed to have people who took an interest in me, especially, well, throughout my life. My, my teachers were really important. Funny, because I think we're going to talk about education in a minute. Yes. <laughs> uh, teachers were really important uh, for me throughout my life. My father, too, he owned a small business. So that obviously left a vestige of my, my, my thing was how, so teachers encouraged me to, to study and then to study what I liked, but then also pushed me in directions that I, I, I didn't want to go. For example, I, I did get a, a, a master's in economics before doing my PhD in, in industrial relations. And that necessitated a lot of math, you know, and, and doing a lot of quantitative work. And I, I didn't want to do it, but this professor who taught me in my first year at Glendon College, that's where I got my undergrad, it's a nice bilingual college on Bayview. Uh, hidden gem, by the way. It's like a liberal arts college that you'd pay 50 grand for in the U.S. And it's tucked away at Bayview and... and, and um, really? Huh. I was and, unaware of that. So that's, yeah, thank it's you. lovely. You should uh -huh. go there, Rob. Sorry, it's the East well, End. You're going to have to come East to see it. It's okay. I just won't tell our members. <laughs> yeah. So he, he, he just said, do economics. It'll open more doors for you. It'll give you credibility when you want to make arguments that are that might be different from what you, you, know, you just like. Because I want to do political science and that sort of yeah. thing. Um, so that's kind of my life story. So my father was a small business owner in the East End. He immigrated from Spain. When they came here, they didn't speak English. I was always fascinated. How did he survive? You know, how did his business survive so many years? And I used to visit as a kid and I used to see the neighborhood, very diverse. Scarborough, as you know, yep. really diverse neighborhood, even back then in the 70s and 80s when I grew up. And there'd be neighbors that would come over take tools from his you know, shop, bring it back. There was trust, there was social capital. Good question, sorry to interrupt. What was, what was the shop, what did it sell? Oh, I'm what sorry, yeah, do? I didn't say that. Uh, it was a mechanic shop. So he owned a okay. uh, garage, he fixed cars. Okay. Here's an interesting detail. So Centennial used to be based there at, at uh, Warden, in fact, the first community college in Canada. Oh, really? Was, was nice. built in Scarborough by the Bill Davis government then, the conservative government, which was a real progressive conservative government <laughs> back then. Bill Davis created the community college system. The first one was Centennial, 1967 or Centenary. It was based near my dad's garage. Turns out they were getting fleeced by the, by the dealership when they were fixing their trucks. And this guy who managed the fleet of trucks for Centennial said, I'm tired of this. He noticed my dad had opened up his garage. He said, hey, could you fix this truck? You know, test it out. My dad fixed, he goes, there's nothing wrong with it. They left the, you know, the, the spark plug caps just not hooked on. This guy said, you got my business. You, you're going to fix the awesome. truck and fleet of the Centennial College, which is oh, the, Kudos, congrats. Dad established trust in the neighborhood. Yes. And small businesses that survive over the long term are connected to their neighbors and neighborhoods. Yeah. And they, they, they create a sense of trust. And that loyalty is what I realized. You know, I was always feeling sorry for small business owners. Oh, they got to compete against the big stores, but they survived. Because in their local communities where local yeah. knowledge exists, they can exist because you have a loyal clientele. You don't need thousands of people showing up every day and then leaving. If you've got 10 or 20 that will come back to you every week or every month or a couple of months, in the case of my dad, to do oil changes, that's all you need. And that's what every community needs. So that, that memory, but it came back many years later when I was living in London, I was working at the London School of Economics. So I've been teaching 20 years, Rob, but, but oh. 12 of those back at U of T, yeah. Okay. And in London, I realized there are all these cool neighborhoods that are being promoted, Brixton, um, Hackney. When, and when I was growing up, those places were like scary. They were like, you know, protests and you were told not to go there. But when I got there in London, these places were burgeoning and creating life. And you know who was creating life? Small scale entrepreneurs and cultural industries and just teeming with ideas. You know, I, and I, I just thought, well, wait a minute. That's what my neighborhood was kind of like, although different. Scarborough? And these sort of inner suburbs of the city and the kind of fringes of, of the city, not the core. The core is yes. the same in any city, right? You're going to find yes. the same franchises, the same big banks. But it's that, that extended part where you are in West yes. Queen West, which I love, West Queen West. Yes. That Western yes. fringe is where innovation happens, and the Eastern fringe and the Northern fringe. Um, and that got my, the ball rolling. And that's when I wrote the book, Small Business in the City. And I connected it with my love of work and employment because these people create jobs. They create maybe two or three or four jobs in a small store, but count them up. When you've got several hundred in a strip, you're talking about thousands of jobs. 
right? Yeah, that one of them. Yeah, that deserves to be recognized. I just got to say, one of our arguments, or the arguments we try to bring forward, is that when they close a big factory, you know, a car manufacturing company is closing, they bring in big money. When totally. a BIA or a neighborhood closes, yeah. you're losing maybe even more jobs, more think to the economy. I don't think that's thought about. Not at all. 